Well, Oregon wasn't the only local team to play this weekend. Really? Yeah, there was another game that happened this Who weekend. Who else played? Uh, I believe the play Huskies is played a strong Friday. Word the Husky, to Husky use. plays Friday. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Uh, our Cougs lost on Saturday night. I woke up to that result. I, uh, I yeah, that was rough. I couldn't hang. It I stayed was, up and uh, watched late. the end of that one. I knew it was going to be. I was watching the end of Kansas BYU too, and I really wanted to see BYU lose. So I was waiting well, for the end of that game. BYU losing didn't shock. I think most of the college football world. No. Uh, Washington State was up 21-7 in that game. Yes. They were. They scored touchdowns on four of their first five drives of the game. I think yeah. it was 28-7 20, at one point, if I'm not saying 28-10, something like that. Yeah. They looked like they were going to run away with it, and then they just couldn't do it. They were the Chargers last mm. night. Great first half, and then just disappeared in the second half. Dream season over. Uh, it is. They're still ranked in the AP Top 25, so they got that going for them. Yeah, and their next game should be a win because they're taking on the Beavs this weekend, who also played... Did they? They did. Oh. At at Air Force. Because I watched the game, but I wasn't sure if they was knew it, they was were Was it playing. the altitude? Was it the altitude? Went on the road to Air Force. The altitude is tough. Colorado Springs even uh, higher, I believe, than Denver. I'd say this this got off to a weird start right out of the gate when it was uh, revealed prior to the game beginning that Ben Branson didn't even make the trip. <laughs> Yeah, he was announced on Monday as the starter, so no quarterback controversy. Now, Bray and, was asked multiple times in the presser, who's your starter? He yeah. said, go Branson's the guy. And then he didn't even make the trip, didn't play, so it was McCoy and then Johnson and then McCoy and then Johnson, and then it was McCoy and then it was Johnson, <laughs> and then it was McCoy, and then breaking, it was Johnson. Yeah. And he was asked in the post game about go Branson and said, yeah, he's not healthy. I Yeah. So twenty eight nothing the final. A uh, lot of the numbers on this game. We in, don't need to go. Through. Incredibly alarming. Twenty eight to nothing. Four ten to one seventy five was the yardage yeah. gain. Time of possession, by the way, forty one minutes to eighteen minutes. It was eighteen. They got to eighteen. They got to eighteen. It felt like it was four. They had a drive. It was in the third quarter. Fourth. Well, the one that made it twenty one nothing, or I think it was early fourth quarter. That was like a nine, just death march. Yeah. Somebody tweeted maybe the the Beaver Blitz account or something had a tweet playing a triple option team when you can't stop. It's like death by a thousand cuts it really is four yards three yeah, yards really six is. yards four yards yeah. three yards two yards seven yards four yards five like just over and over and over again yep and 28 to nothing oregon state finds a new low with their fifth straight loss uh yeah and we don't have audio from bray because oregon state doesn't believe in recording any of their post-game press conferences on the road no I, I I went and read Nick Daschle and the oregonian put a piece post-game q and a's and there's a couple questions in there that i just let me just get out in front and say this, because I told this to a Beaver fan this weekend. Do you know what I'm actually most jealous of Oregon from? What? The conference is a fair one to say, oh, I'm jealous. I wish we were in the Big Ten. Nah, that's not it. The flashy Nike stuff, that's pretty cool. That's not it. It's the coach. And it's not just because the coach is winning. It's it's just having a coach that's a red ass when you're not good, it, it makes the experience actually less fun. And so, like, Mario had this at Oregon where it's, like, clear red ass, not very likable, but he wins. So, Duck fans screams about how amazing he is, even <laughs> though they know that he's not fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. I have the opposite problem going. Um, he was asked about quarterback stuff. He basically misled and lied about Gold Branson all week. And then asked about the direction of the program. Said, you can't tell right now if this is a good or bad direction for the program. You lost twenty eight nothing to Air Force. To Air Force, a team who was two and seven coming in. You mustered barely a hundred yards of total offense. You've lost five straight games now. You don't have a quarterback. Uh, I just I would ask, what are we waiting for to see what the direction in the future is? Because he was asked about Jonathan's first year. They won two games in that one, and I had Beaver fan. You know, some Beaver fans are going to kind of make excuses. I just think the reality is we're just not seeing good coaching. We're not seeing development. We're seeing almost no direction of the program. Yeah. Was I mistaken when they were trying to rush on a field goal unit late in the first half that Bray was thinking about calling a timeout? So that was maybe... Because I was on the air yeah. doing the pregame show and I was yeah. watching on the iPad. I'm like, is he trying to call a timeout right now? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, Air Force had no timeouts. They ran a play and with about 16 seconds, they're doing the exchange for the offense to the field goal unit. They run on. They have no timeouts. Again, clock is ticking. You can feel the antsiness of the crowd, which there wasn't a lot. Yeah, are they going to get it off? And they weren't even fully set. The field goal kicker wasn't even fully ready, Dirt. And with, like, one second left, they hiked it, he kicked it, it was bad. Bray ran to the ref to call a timeout. And I, they are lucky they didn't count that because I just kept thinking. Because he missed the kick. 
Dude, I've never coached a down of football at any level, and like even I know you just let them be antsy and do that. What yeah. what are we doing? Did they have twelve guys on the field? Nope. Was no nope. none of that. No, nope. okay. he just wanted to ice the kicker in a moment where the kicker was already nervous. Yeah. So like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. You can clearly tell where I'm at now talking about Oregon State football. If you're watching on YouTube, um, I'm wearing a bag over my head for those on the radio and app because like at this point it's embarrassing and it, it doesn't show any optimism no hope i don't think they're going to win their next two games and so they're going to go four and eight this year is where i'm kind of mentally at yeah and i don't know how you're anywhere else mentally and you can suggest well it's year one let him figure it out he's young no doubt they're not going to make a move i just want to note the team that is going to be in your conference hired their own alum and andy avalos from oregon a couple years ago he was not good in year one, and then he went 10-4 and four in year two, and then they fired Andy Avalos the third year in when he was 5-5. Five and five. Yeah. And that's Boise State. That and, wasn't good enough for and them. And so I'm not saying that Oregon State, again, should or will make a move, but I think it's all fair. Orem was like, you should be questioning some coordinators or coaching. I think you should be questioning all of this because none of what you're seeing is good from the top level on down and it's just bad right now man it's real bad i had a lot of beaver fans telling me they're not watching anymore they're checked out and i don't blame people yeah i don't blame anybody because that attendance against washington state's gonna be bad weather could be really bad on saturday too yeah i i it was tough because um, that vision and that game was in my mind and then later on on saturday night i'm sitting around and i'm watching a guy who you could have hired at new mexico who not it's not like new mexico's had a great year so don't get me wrong there but he's got a pretty good quarterback that can run around and make plays. I don't know if whoever watched and stayed up late enough to watch the New Mexico game. That quarterback's a stud, man. He was running around. His numbers, like in terms of passing and rushing, are one of the few guys who's gone over like 2,000 yards and 1,000 rushing yards or whatever in college football. He was all over the place, won that game almost single-handedly by himself. Yeah. And I just thought they can. They hired a coach who's got a good track record. He brought in, or at least they had a quarterback on the roster. Like That was a guy that was potentially available for you, and you decided to not go that route. I, I want to get to a couple of things because I don't know where, what happened to the offense. 